Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 48, Going Off Script. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my vibrant and illustrious co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello, and I don't know what the second word means. (laughs) So this week we did have a show uh, researched and prepared. We decided to kind of uh, push that one back. Because uh, you didn't have a very good week this week. Not really, no. So uh, I thought it would be best if we just sort of took a step back, reflected on the week, talked about the things that were bothering you. Because uh, I think a lot of the things that you um, had faced this week that kind of got on your nerves or were bringing you down, I think a lot of teens out there face that sort of th- these sorts of issues. And, uh, you know, normally our podcasts focus on one topic and we dive deep into that and, and we pick it apart. Um, and it's always a relevant topic to teens, but we very rarely get a chance to just sit down and, and talk about what this week was like, you know, this was a challenging week. Uh, so I think we're going to dedicate the show to that this week. Uh, we'll talk about some of these things that are fairly common obstacles that teens run into. And then we'll talk about how we cope with some of these things. Um, and hopefully it'll it'll be therapeutic for you. And, you know, depending on, on who's watching or listening out there, it might be therapeutic for someone else as well. But I think I think it makes it relatable when this type of thing is coming from from you. I mean, you just went through these things here. So I think, I think it'll it'll be helpful. Yeah. Shall we get started? We shall. Okay. So let us start. So I figure we'll do it sort of as a question and answer. I know we did prep a little bit beforehand about some of the topics. So I'm just going to kind of, kind of lead the discussion and We'll just turn it into an interview with you, okay? All righty. So, first question is, how was your week? Uh, definitely not one of my best weeks. I definitely didn't want most of the stuff to happen on the week where I came back from a pretty long break. Honestly, the week could have been better. Right. So, this was your first full week back at school. We had a short couple of days at the tail end of last week. Um, and I have to imagine our, your schedule was still kind of a little screwed up from a long vacation, late hours, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, how, how was the first full week? You know, why don't you give us an idea of some of the things that you ran into? I mean, the main problems I ran into were like my emotional and stress status. Okay. They were the highest level of problems that I had to encounter. So what do you think is driving the emotional side right now? Well, first off, it was the first, um, it was the first week back from a pretty long break, so that could have something to do with that. Sure, yeah. Plus, I am going through the midst of my monthly now, which also probably had a tie into this. Mommy actually mentioned a few times that it might be might also be because my monthly was coming, and guess what? Like always, she was right. Yeah. Well, and and that's the thing. I mean, when this happens, you feel a significant amount of physical discomfort. 
Uh, and because of the charged hormones and everything that you go through here, it, it's a very emotionally taxing uh, week or so that you go through here. Um, but let's talk about the emotional side of things for a minute. So what is it emotionally that has set you off this week? And, and like I said before, don't name names, but just give a, an example. Well, the first example I would be able to give was that um, my sleep habits, um, when I first had to go back to sleep and wake up at 6 and clock in the morning when I had to get back in that that schedule that night I could barely sleep because I ended up getting just having an emotional breakdown and I had no idea why I was causing it I kept telling myself I needed to go to sleep but like I, I just couldn't go to sleep I just kept on crying and I didn't know what to do so part of the problem you ran into was the frustration of not being able to go to sleep and dealing with the charged emotions from not... Because I know how frustrating it can be when you, you have to go to sleep at a certain time. You go up to bed, and for whatever reason, your brain just doesn't want you to sleep. And it gets frustrating, you know? And you find that you're up hours past when you're supposed to be up, and then it has a physical effect the next morning. Mm-hmm. Is that sort of what you ran into this week? Actually, the weirdest thing is... That night that I had a pretty bad sleep, I was, like, awake in the morning. But the rest of the nights when I actually got a good sleep, I was just, like, not feeling in the morning. And it was the weirdest thing. That is strange. I don't get it. So let's talk about, aside from the fatigue aspect of not sleeping, emotionally, what sets you off? Is it people being annoying? Is it too much work? What... Did someone say something to you? Was somebody mean to you? What was the emotional trigger points for you this week? Most of the emotional tr trigger points were just um, people being annoying um, and just the workload and just regular occurrences that, that will happen that just set me off. Now, were these things that under normal circumstances they don't? really set you off you just sort of tolerate them but because of you know being on your period is it be, is it is that escalating those things that would normally just be annoying making them unbearable instead well sometimes i don't really notice too many annoying people i mean i always notice annoying people but they're normally tolerable but for some reason um they this week they were just unbearable and I couldn't take it. Um, but I'm pretty sure with the workload, if I wasn't going through my monthly, I would probably still be stressed about it. Okay. Now, are you are you fatigued as a result of coming back from vacation? Like. Like, are you tired? Are you not catching up with sleep, and then the inability to sleep? Is it just that you're overall tired as well? I mean, um, after the one night where I could barely get any sleep, I was actually able to get a pretty decent amount of sleep um, the rest of the week. But along with the fact that my monthly, it also tends to make me drowsy. So today and yesterday, um, I was pretty drowsy. So, um, so you sort of find yourself... Nodding off in in class a little bit or something like that? Well, not really. It's just I find myself getting more tired. Like, during gym, I could find myself sweating quicker. Plus, there was the heater on, apparently, and I still have no idea why they, they had the heater on. Mm. You know, that frustrates me. That's one of the things that frustrated me today. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, on top of that, you said you weren't feeling well, right? Mm -mm. So what are you having, abdominal pain, you having headaches? Well, yesterday I had small cramps and um, a headache. Today I'm experiencing just as though I have a stomach ache. And for some reason I f was extra hungry today. Mm. Okay. Like right now I don't know if my stomach wants me to eat or if it's too full. I honestly don't know. Okay. So just general discomfort then. 
Now, I know uh, earlier in the week you did have an orthodontist appointment. Mm -hmm. They they made an adjustment to your uh, braces. Mm -hmm. And you did have some discomfort from that. How has that played into uh, as a factor in how this week is going for you? I mean, it's been kind of hard to eat, especially the first few days. I, like... When I, when I had grapes the day after I had my orthodontist appointment, I couldn't eat them because every time I tried to bite down, my teeth would hurt. Yeah. So, um, and of course, but for some reason, this one spring, sometimes when I would talk, my lip would get caught on the spring, which, Ooh. you know, hurts. I bet, yeah. At one point, I couldn't take it, and I just took a piece of tissue and put it right where the spring was so my lip wouldn't get caught. And that's what I normally do after, if they have big adjustments to my mouth, I would just put it where it hurts so it doesn't touch it. Did you have any of the wax that you would use on your braces for band or anything that you could use? Um, no, they were in my trumpet and by that point, um, my trumpet was back at school when I realized I could actually do that thanks to mm. mommy, so. Okay. I just used a tissue. Okay, so that, that kind of bugs you earlier in the week. You're kind of having some stomach issues. Aside from that, anything else bothering you physically? You're not, you don't have a cold or anything like that? No, I haven't been sick, which is kind of good. This year, I really haven't gotten sick. It's just a few sneezes here and there, probably just, you know, change of season. So let's talk about the ever-popular gym class. Oh, great. Uh, I know almost every day you have something that frustrates you in gym class. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the frustrations you've run into this week at gym class? Well, when we have to change, I change near these girls who just will not shut up, okay? They just go on and on talking, and I'm just like, in my brain, I'm always like, when will they shut up? When will they shut up? When will they shut up? Like, I just want them to be quiet for once. Right. Uh, is it, are they saying things to make fun of you? Or are they deliberately trying to get on your nerves? Like, I honestly don't know if they're deliberately trying to get on my nerves because they don't actually talk to me. Okay. But they just frequently annoy me. They're just so obnoxious. And I think my, and I think like, when I stand in line and they're still, like, changing and talking mainly, I can just tell that they're the loudest group. Now, do they see that they're getting some kind of reaction out of you when, when they do this? I never try to give them a reaction, but today I just couldn't take it and I started heavy breathing and just my mind was racing with just, ang like, frustrated thoughts. Okay. And, you know, we'll talk in the next segment about how we can sort of cope with some of these things. Mm -hmm. So you also mentioned one of the things that's been wearing on you has been schoolwork stress. Uh, is that homework? Is that lots of projects? Um, thing is, it's a lot of projects. Now, my... Now, it's not to do with my big projects for math and ELA, like my math menu, well, not my math menu, my ELA menu and my math um, working period two project. They're fine. I got plenty of time to finish them. I'm actually almost done with, I'm actually pretty much done with them. Okay. It's just the ones that have like a week deadline, which frustrate me. I mean, they're the group projects. I don't really mind the groups. It's just... I don't so, like the deadlines being so close and having to do a lot of work. So when you say a week deadline, when you get the project, you're only given a week to do it? I mean, I'm given a couple extra days for the week, but, like, I have my ELA essay, an argumentative essay, which is five paragraphs on when... You argumentative? Never. <laughs> really? <laughs> So we have to do an argumentative essay on self-driving cars, whether they're good or bad, or should happen or not happen. Depends. Do you like running people over? Then they're good. <laughs> yeah, nice. So, um, and we had like nine days to do it, and that was actually the thing that frustrated me in ELA today. Like, when I was trying to work, people would just super obnoxious. They were just talking so loud, and I just couldn't take it. So you had mentioned these are group projects, right? Well, 
the only one that was, well, my one band project and my history project, they were both group projects, but the ELA one was just do it on your own. Okay. And the only time that they give you, do they give you time in class to do this? Yeah, it's just I don't feel like it's enough time for me. I kind of want to make sure I have good work, and it kind of takes me a while. And can you do this outside of class? Yes, I can, but that also gives me more stress when I have to do homework. Okay, I could see that. On top of my math, I also have other things. Plus, if I don't finish what I need to get done in class, because in ELA we also have our centers that we need to get done, and if I can't finish them, then I also have to do them for homework, along with my ELA essay, and it's just been kind of stressful on me. So has this week been a lot of excess homework? Is that it? Um... I mean, it's technically not meant to be homework. It's like projects, but they've just been just throwing stuff at A lot at of me. them piling up on you at once. Yeah, it's just like we're having a lot of important grades going on in, ev in pretty much every single one of my classes. Like my math test is yeah. kind of soon. I After my one um, history. After I have to finish the history po project, then we also soon have the test coming up along with our, we have like contents of the work we do and um, he checks them every marking period. Um, and in ELA, we have our menu along with apparently the state test, which, in, which, which is right. in a couple of weeks. And of course, the essays also do soon. And my math projects also do as well. Just a lot of dead and just. Well, and, and I totally, I totally understand how quickly this can get overwhelming. What I did want to offer was kind of a parallel to the real world. Um, so for me at work, um, I usually have one or two projects going on at a time, having to juggle those and make sure they get done and get everyone on the board with it and keep the schedules going and everything. Well, this January, I've got four major projects going on. And these are four projects across two companies for a value of probably about a half a million dollars invested in all of them. So what you're going through now is stressful, but there's a value in what you're going through because it's going to prepare you initially for what you're going to do in college, but ultimately for what you're going to do in the real world. Um, you know how like we try to, when we talk about math and we try to relate math to real world issues so that you can kind of understand how important it is, mm -hmm. this type of thing, time management, project management, all this type of stuff has a very real impact on the real world too. Uh, this is, these are all the skills that I use at work. You know, we have a new phone system we're putting in. We have a new software system that runs the whole company that we're putting in. We have a new facility that we're opening in Texas, which is, you know, 1,600 miles away that we have to manage. Um, I have numerous contracts, annual contracts that are coming up that I have to negotiate through. So, so all the stuff that you're going through now is really... It's exercising your brain and how to deal with stressful project management type things because that's what you're going to run into in the real world. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all stuff that you're going to get stressed at with now. And ultimately, it's rather low impact consequences now. But as you get older and as you progress through school and through college and into professional life, those consequences get higher and higher. Now the rewards get much higher as well. So you'll start seeing those rewards become proportional to the consequences, but everything that you're going through now is really a life lesson. It's not just a matter of let's throw everything at you and get you overwhelmed because we have to get through a school year. It's seeing how you cope with things and teaching you how to, how to deal with them and teaching you how to break complex things down in the smaller pieces, all the stuff we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but it's funny because I'm feeling extremely overwhelmed right now 
with all the things that I'm doing at work and all the stuff that you're talking about right now is what I'm going through. Like today I, w I was working on one portion of the project and it seemed like every five minutes somebody was knocking on my door with a question or needing me to do something or fix something. And it got to the point that there was just so many interruptions that I couldn't even work today. Um, and a lot of this week has been that way since I've got back from vacation and everyone's kicking back into high gear. So it's funny how what you're dealing with at school right now is such a direct parallel to what my work has been like this week too. Um, so I thought this, this discussion kind of could benefit from, from that clarity. <laughs> so, okay. So we talked about coming back from your first week. We talked about emotional and, and physical unwellness. Uh, we talked about what frustrated you, gym class, schoolwork stress, orthodontist, and sleeping habits. So that's everything that we had written down about what this week has entailed. Is there anything else that we've missed that we need to include? Any things that just came to mind? Anything like that? Um, hmm. Or do we pretty much cover everything that made the week? A rough week. You pretty much covered most of it. All right. Before we move on to how you coped with these things or didn't cope with them, <laughs> what what good things happened this week? Let's talk about, let's focus on the positives for a little bit. You tell me what good things happened to you this week. I mean, I was able to talk to, um, I was able to see my friend Chris more since we okay. are in school together. Um, we all saw our... We also started a little role play thing where we basically are two different characters and when we text each other we're basically those two characters mm. and it's just like having conversations but in the in a fantasy world. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that was nice. Um I've also been able to see um and talk to some of my other friends who I was who I wasn't able to talk to over um, break. Now, have you found th the additional interaction with your friends has helped you cope with some of these issues this week? In some way, yes. Okay, well, that's good. That's that's certainly a nice refuge to have someone that you can turn to. Mm -hmm. What other good things have happened to you this week? How about any consequences? One of the things we're going to talk about is is limiting your screen time. What good consequences have come from that? Oh, yeah. Me and Mommy have started doing our movie hour every night after after 8 o'clock. Bef before 9 o'clock when I go to bed, we will um, choose a movie on Disney Plus and start watching it. Honestly, that's definitely better than me just trying to find something to do because I'm not going to sit there for an hour just but just going through my thoughts. I can do because, well, who wants to go through their thoughts? Well, that's kind of cool that you get to spend some extra time with Mommy. Yeah. So the week wasn't all that bad. You had some, some high notes to the week then. Yeah. Good. So let's take a little break. When we come back, we'll talk about what you have done or what you can do to cope with some of the things that you've run into. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about was talking about the issues. So one of the therapeutic things that we do and really what this podcast is focused on is dissecting the things that are causing you stress or anxiety or worry or frustration or whatever and talking about them. So expound on that a little bit. How how do we use talking as a tool for that and what kind of effect does it tend to have for you? I mean, before when I was going through the same thing in sixth grade, when we got home, we'd always like go into the basement with you. And if I had a really rough day, I'd talk about it with you guys. Even though I really can't meet you guys in person, the first thing, um, I would always make sure to call you guys and mention how my problems went. And you guys would always try to find the quickest solution to it. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, is that when you talk about stuff, we might not always have the solutions. Um, some problems are things that you need to solve yourself. 
Uh, some problems are beyond our understanding, uh, but sometimes just talking about it allows you to, to look at the problem, step back and look at it from a different perspective. And it helps to put it into context. Like one of the things that we try to do is balance, and I don't want to sound all you know Jedi-like with this, but one of the things we try to do is balance the good with the bad, which is what we just did in the last segment. So this bad thing happened, this bad thing happened, this bad thing, but this good thing happened too. And this good thing happens, so it kind of helps to balance things out. Yeah. Um, but talking about it when things happen to you allows you to have a different perspective and be a little bit more objective in thinking about these things. And that objectivity allows you to maybe come up with a way of dealing with it or an answer to a problem or something like that. It's that ability to, to step back from something when you're too close to it. And, and a week when you have all these things happening at one time, you really are too close to it to really see it for the whole that it is, for the whole picture that it is. Uh, you you kind of need what we, we tend to call in a professional term a 30,000-foot view, right? Have you ever heard that term before? Not really, no. So think of an airplane, okay? You've been on a plane before, mm -hmm. and when the plane's on the ground and you look at things... Things are big and they're close to you and they're up in your face. So if you're sitting on that runway, you can't really see too far beyond the edge of the airport. But when the plane takes off at the 30,000 foot level, you can see a whole lot more when you look out the window. And you can take in the fact that that airport was really insignificant in the grand scheme of things. But you don't get to see all the detail. So it helps you to put things into perspective that even though I'm running into a problem in this area here, that's really small compared to the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So it helps to put that in the perspective. Oh. We talked about distracting from the issues. What are some of the ways that you distract yourself from the issues that you run into? Well, most of the time I just take out my phone and watch a quick YouTube video or I just sit down and think about my thoughts. Or and is that to, to not think about the things that are bothering you and take a sort of break from it? Yeah, like listening to music. I would always listen to music and let my imagination wander with the songs. Yeah, and that's sort of what I do, especially like if I'm walking or something like that or exercising. You know, you listen to music and it sort of takes you outside of where you are right now. And, and you don't have to deal with the troubles that, that are pressing down on you. Mm -hmm. What else do you do to distract? Um, I always try to talk with you guys and see how your day was to distract myself from... If I had a bad day, I would always go to a cat, say hello, pet it. Yeah. And just... Yeah, we, we take solace in our pets. You know, I have a rough day, and, and I'm not the type of person who typically talks about his day when i get done at work if i had a bad day at work i just want to come home and and be done with it and recharge and go back um so i'm not the type of person who really talks stuff through uh mommy is the kind of the opposite when mommy has a bad day she wants to talk about it um and you know over the years i've learned to just listen and Shut up, basically. Um, you know, in the early days, I'm the type of person that I'm a problem solver. So when I hear someone tell me a problem, my brain automatically kicks into that problem-solving mode and I try to figure out solutions. And that's, you know, in mommy's case, that's really not what she wants. Mommy just needs to sort of unload, and that's how she decompresses and de-stresses. And she just needs someone to listen. And, and over the years, I've kind of learned to, to do that. You know, I'll listen, I'll ask questions, you know, and, and sometimes I try to steer her conversations a little bit if, if she's getting, because sometimes when mommy talks about something, she'll get agitated about it. And if I see that happening, I'll try and steer her away from that and, and guide the conversation. But I've, I've learned my lesson to try to not solve any of mommy's problems at this point. And she <laughs> just needs to unload. Yeah. And sometimes that might just be what you need. You might need to just come in and, and unload sometimes. Like, man, you know, Susie's really annoying this 
today and she just wouldn't shut up and she kept annoying me and 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 that might be all you need to do i can't solve that problem for you yeah you know that's sort of what you did to me um on the call that we had earlier this week and i couldn't help you so i kind of went into that mode again um but I think you just needed to do what mommy needs to do from time to time and blow off a little steam. And and there's nothing wrong with that. That's, you know, I gave you before the steam kettle analogy where mm -hmm. a steam kettle, you put water in, you put fire on it, and the water starts to boil. Well, that causes the steam kettle to whistle as it comes out. But if you cap the spout, that pressure builds up and builds up. And if it can't release, it explodes. So if you can have your little steam kettle whistle there and you can let off a little bit of steam, then it doesn't get overwhelming. So you also talked about getting some extra rest and medication for the discomfort and maybe even some change in eating habits. Talk about that a little bit. Well, what I normally do to... Um fix the problems that go on with my stomach. Mommy normally always recommends medication because that's the best solution mainly. Mm -hmm. um, because pain medicine will normally help my stomach. And we're talking, we're not talking prescription stuff, we're just talking a Tylenol, a pill of Tylenol or something like that for the, yeah. for the pain. Um, and with the change in eating habits, Mommy, for instance, Normally when we have Chinese on Fridays, I would get, like, chicken fingers, but Mommy said to stay steer clear from them and decided instead I should have some soup, and I was okay with that. Yeah, and I, and I think Mommy was spot on with that one, uh, especially if your stomach is upset. You know, the last thing you need is greasy chicken fingers sitting in your stomach right now. A little bit of soup in there will help to soothe it. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Mom strikes again. <laughs> so we also talked about... Uh, taking a step back and thinking calming thoughts. Um, tell us a little bit about that. When does that help and, and how do you go about doing that? Well, for instance, if I'm trying to work on something and people are just being really loud and obnoxious, I stop working for a little bit, um, close my eyes, massage my head, and just uh, try to calm my breathing and think th and just think try to think of calming thoughts okay and eventually i'll calm myself down and get back to work and i think that's really the best way to do things what's the one thing that i tell you when something happens and you start to get upset you always tell me to stop and think and think logically all right think logically work the problem getting upset and it's human nature you know we can't help but get upset, but we have to recognize when we are. I mean, you've seen me, you know, I could be downstairs working on something for the computer and I know how to do it. And for some reason it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And I get angry and I yell at it and, and realize I'm making an idiot of myself and I have to take a step back and I have to walk away. I have to calm down. And then I can go back to it and miraculously, once I go back to it with a calm head, I can get it to work. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a very good idea. Um, the other thing we talked about was regarding big projects. We talked about you had a lot of projects that were due. I have a lot of projects that are coming up. Um, so in dealing with those, we talked about take small breaks while we're doing them and breaking big projects into smaller tasks. So give us a little bit about how you do that. Well, normally I would always find like, if I'm doing a group project, we'll split the work up evenly. Occasionally I'll probably get like the slightly extra work because you know, I'm that kind of person. You're just that dependable. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'll, and like for, and that's basically how we do it with that. We just make sure we do our part. And for like any reading um, assignments that I do, um, 
I always think, well, how many days do I need to get the book done in order to do this? So I have the number of days and I have the number of pages. I divide them and figure out how many pages I need to read per day. So it's just a simple mathematical equation at that point. Yeah, and I normally can finish early because normally the mathematical equation always ends up turning the number into a decimal. Okay. And I'll tell you, I do sort of the same thing. Like the one project, the big project that we have now, we've spent three months just working on the proposal and getting the numbers right and all that stuff. And the rollout of this project is going to take about six months. And what we did was we took that project, we broke it down into three phases, and then those phases are then broken down into tasks. And as you execute and complete one task, you can move on to the next and the next. And then each phase has a deliverable that the next phase is dependent on. So I can't start phase two until phase one is done. So I check all the boxes on phase one, I get my whatever it is that I need to produce here, and I take it to phase two. So it takes that six-month process, breaks it down into uh, one or two-week tasks, and makes it more manageable. Yeah, that's sort of what I did with my math project. Like, when we were on vacation, I decided to split up, okay, I'm going to do five slides today, and have like just some information that I need to m include and then I'll fix it up later. Then I'll do the other five slides tomorrow and then yep. I'll do and then I'll fix up some slides today, then figure out how many I want to do the next days. Yeah, and that's the smart way to do it. And, and then those big scary projects aren't so scary anymore. Um so we talked about meditation relaxation techniques. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you meditate. Well, most of the times when I meditate, I just make sure to take some deep breaths. I don't actually, like, have any movements for it. Okay, so you're not doing transcendental meditation or, you know, nothing like that? I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, and sometimes if I really need help sleeping, I would normally just turn on some meditation music to help calm me down. Okay. So for sleeping, you do a little bit of meditation, some breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. What are some of the breathing exercises you do? It's normally just like a deep, like take a deep breath, hold it, and then let it out and just repeat a few times. Okay. That normally helps calm me down. I've never actually had to go on any, any farther than that, which is kind of good. Good, good. So you also say you listen to music. Now, I'm guessing this isn't the kind of music you listen to throughout the day. So meditation music, what kind of calming music is it that you listen to? It's, well, like the meditation music? Yeah. Well, normally sometimes I would just, like, find meditation music on YouTube, um, and it's always like calming music along with and the one i was watching had calming pictures as well so okay so like a lot of enya huh <laughs> i don't even you don't know enya okay no. I'll, I'll show you enya after this okay uh what else you do a little bit of reading mm. very little bit of reading well no i actually don't do that um, little reading. Um, I only do it mainly just to try to get myself into the zone, calm my brain, you know. I have my book I need to read for ELA. Okay. So I just read my book. Now, do you find reading helps you get to sleep? Because that's one of the techniques that I use to go to sleep. Yeah, like I read for an hour and I'm like pretty drowsy by then. So yeah. I can just... Put the book down, turn over, and after about 30 minutes or so, I'll fall asleep. Okay. And one of the things we did institute since we came back from vacation was screen time limits. Explain that to the audience. So for my screen time limits, I go to bed at 9. So we decided to do an hour before I go to bed so that I'm, I don't have technology, like, in my brain, so my brain has, like, an hour to cool down. And as of, re as of recently, me and Mommy have started doing movie hour every night, where after 
Once 8 o'clock hits, I put my technology down, I go downstairs with her, we go on Disney Plus and find a movie. And normally we have to break the movie up in two days, so, you know. We and so obviously you're not watching Avengers movies. No, we're okay. just watching calming, like, we're doing Pixar movies right now, so. And they are pretty calming. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so the last thing that we did discuss which I think is probably the most therapeutic thing uh, in this list, uh, especially when you're going through your monthly, and that is chocolate. Chocolate. So, uh, you know, it's funny. It's almost like an old wives' tale that when a woman is going through her monthly, that chocolate helps. Is it true? Does it help? <laughs> it actually kind of does. Does like, it? When you eat chocolate, it's like the one thing that you know <laughs> you're going to like um, most of the time when you have chocolate, especially in my case. It's the one thing that you know your body will actually enjoy and not want to hate that you don't normally hate. I mean, for some reason, I think chocolate just tastes slightly better when I'm on my monthly. <laughs> So there's a psychological factor in the uh, comfort food aspect of chocolate, I take it. Yeah. Um, but did you also know that there is a scientific reason why it helps as well? And no, I did not. So when you eat chocolate, the chocolate itself, the taste of the chocolate, the smell of the chocolate that's been found, actually releases endorphins in the brain. And endorphins are chemicals that that give you a happy euphoric feeling. So when you eat chocolate or really any comfort food, you know, like for me, a comfort food is my mom's cheesecake. Um, it releases endorphins in the brain and it causes chemical changes in the brain that make you feel happy and, and satisfied and, and warm and fuzzy, if you will. <laughs> Uh, so one of the things that I did today, you know, you and I talked before I left work, you, uh, had mentioned that you were having a bad time. So I hit the vending machine at work, which was freshly stocked up with goodies and I brought some chocolate home for you. Yeah. And the thing is when I was going through sixth grade, when I first went through all the emotional stuff, if I was really emotional, you'd always have some backup chocolate for me to eat and I'd always feel better. Yeah. So, and I, and I think, I think we're smart enough now that we keep a decent supply of chocolate in the house all, all the time now mm -hmm. as an emergency thing. Yeah. So, okay. So you had a rough week. We have some coping mechanisms. It's Friday, right? We're going into the weekend now. Yep. Um, how do you feel now? Uh, definitely better than we when now that we have the talk and the fact that I'm going to be able to have chocolate after this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in that case, then I won't hold you around too much longer with the podcast. I don't want to deny you your chocolate. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, like I said at the beginning, I think this is what you went through this week. I think it's very typical of what teens go through. Um, and I hope that some of these coping mechanisms that we talked about here that help you out might help out some, some other teens out there to get through some, you know, what can be rough weeks sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I, I, I think you're, you're fortunate in that, you know, you've got mommy and daddy here to sort of lean on and talk to and try to get through these things. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of teens out there that don't have that advantage. Um, but they shouldn't feel like they're left alone out there. There's plenty of places that you can find help. Uh, you know, one of the things we try to do with our podcast is to teach teens to deal with these things themselves, be self-sufficient, and be able to pick yourself up. And I think once you're able to do that, I think you're a better person for it. So, did you have any closing remarks? Yep. All right. We'll come back. We'll get closing remarks and shout-outs, and then we'll go have chocolate. <laughs> Good. 
go for your closing remarks. Alrighty, so today doesn't have a specific topic, but it has focused on one main thing, and that is talking out problems with someone who will listen. It's always important that if you're going through tough times, it you always should have someone, at least someone, to talk to about it and who someone who you can trust to lean back on, I suppose. And I'm fortunate enough to have family and friends who will do that. And um, for you, it can be anyone, whether it's a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, or a friend, or even s- like someone who you've s- you see often, even though you don't might you might not know them completely. If you can trust them enough, and you know they will listen, just try to talk your problems out. It might be one of the best coping mes- mechanisms. Okay. Any shout outs? Yep, I'm giving a shout out to. You guys are my friends because you guys have definitely gotten me through some pretty tough times. Okay. I think that was a very good uh, uh, closing remark there. Uh, And I think, well, I definitely appreciate the shout out. No problem. And uh, I think that just about does it for this week. Already. I'm glad we were able to help you out a little bit there. Thank you. Uh, I would invite folks to uh, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can check out our video podcast at youtube.com slash insights into things. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast on the web You can get all of our video, audio, show transcripts, and show notes at www.insightsintothings.com. And you can get our audio at podcast.insightsintheteens.com. And I think that's it. Also, don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights Into Entertainment, starring you and Mommy. And Insights Into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, starring you and my brother Sam. And we'll have another one of those coming up in the next week or so. Whoa. Awesome. Well, thank you, sweetheart. No problem. On to the chocolate. (laughs) Bye, everyone.